Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we set up the functionality for picking up our batteries and then adding that charge level to our player's current power level. Now we want to set up the functionality for our power level to slowly decrease over time. So we're going to do that using our game mode class. This game mode class is always in the level. You can compare this to what you would create in Unity uh, as a game manager, which is always spawned in you don't destroy it on load vice that is what this game mode class is um, it is a a singleton class inside of the level that basically holds all the global rules for your game and in this game mode we want to set the rules up for our player to decrease its player or its power level over time so i'm gonna go ahead and jump in here and I'm going to create a protected section. And in that section, I want to go ahead and create a couple of variables. So I want a U property that is edit defaults only. Um, I want to read and write to it in blueprint. And I also want to see it in a category called power. And now that data type is going to be a float and we're going to call this our delay time and this will be the time that our timer ticks at and the reason we're doing this with a timer instead of the tick uh, function is because in the original version of this i noticed something that i didn't want is a very small numbers being uh deducted from the the power level i want uh, full numbers to be deducted from the power level and they were using tick as a way to make this uh, deduction frame rate independent but the way timers work in unreal is that they are calculated using real world time so once your game starts there's a timer uh, that is calculating the world time and if you start a timer it'll start counting your timer as well using that same world time or real world time so it will be frame rate frame rate independent because the real world time doesn't change depending on uh, how many frames you're getting in your current game so let's go ahead and create this float delay time and then i'm gonna copy and paste this entire couple of lines here and i want to call this my decay amount and this will be the amount that gets taken away from our power level each tick of our timer. So um, we also need to go in and I believe that begin play. Let me see. Um, begin play. Start play. Oh, that calls start play. Um, is there a begin play override? There is a begin play override in every actor. I just don't know if it's public or um, or if it's protected. Let me look at my collector that H and mm, let's look for begin play. There's no begin play on this at all either. Jesus Christ. Um, I do believe that it's uh, protected. So I'm going to go ahead and create an override to that begin play function. And there it is. So in this begin play, once the game starts, we want to create a timer and start ticking it. And we're going to use a new type that we haven't shown just yet. I'm gonna call, add that virtual specifier there and then I'll generate this implementation. And uh, in begin play, we wanna go ahead and call the super so that we can call whatever logic is called in the default actor class. And then here we want to go ahead and create a F timer handle. Now this timer handle acts as a key that we will pass into a timer. And this is so it can keep track of which timers are which that's all it does so we'll call this our power decay timer handle that's exactly what it is and this timer 
uh, is located in the world. So we need to say get world and we need to get the world timer manager or get timer manager, I'm sorry. And in that timer manager, there's a few uh, calls that you can uh, create here or few functions that you can call here. We got set timer, we got clear timer, we got pause timer, but the one we want is uh, set timer. So this will set a timer and you'll see that this timer takes in a handle. It takes in a, uh, this one takes in a delegate, but the one that we're going to use is this one here. It takes in a handle. It takes in a, a class or object, and then it takes in a address to a method that you want to call. And it takes in that, that rate and it says whether it wants to delay or not, or, um, have a initial delay. So we need to go ahead and pass in all the things we need. So we need the handle, which is our power, the K timer handle. We need our object or our class, which is this. And we need an address to a function that we haven't created yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the address because I have an idea what I want to call this. I want to say a battery collector game mode and let's give it the function start power level decay and this function will start our power level decay and we haven't created it yet that's why we get in this error so the next thing that we need to pass in is our in rate that is our decay rate that we created or our, uh, our delay timer, delay time is what we called it. And do we want this to loop? Yes. So we go ahead and set that to true. And then we can go ahead and jump out of this function because that's all we need. So now let's go ahead and copy this name here and let's go to our header file. And in our protected section, let's go ahead and create a void start power level decay function and we want to go ahead and create an implementation of it and all we're going to do in this function is set our power level equal to uh we're going to call that function in our character class to to update our power level and then we're going to pass in a value so we want to go ahead and say well, first we need to get, first we need to go ahead and get a reference to our player class. Then we need to call the timer or call the function that updates our power level. And we only want to do that if, um, if our power level is positive. So we want to make sure we check if our power level is greater than zero. Okay. And that is good. So getting a reference to our player class is going to seem familiar. We're going to make a cached variable to our battery collector character. You'll see we won't have to include it because it's already included because that is uh, how it's going to find our default player class there. So we need our a battery, a battery collector character. We call this our player character. And the way we're going to get this character is by casting to that type because we want to make sure that it's this, this type because at some point you you will probably use a spectator class at one point and we don't want the game to crash um, when this is called. So we want to make sure that it's the same type. And then our source is going to be something that you haven't seen yet. And it's a, a, a function library that's created by Unreal that just holds a, a, a lot of functionality for gameplay. So it's called the U Gameplay statics library it is declared in this header if you don't have rider it's declared in the kismet slash gameplay statics dot h 
uh, directory. And we want to call get player pawn. And this will get our player pawn. And we need to pass in the world context, which is this, since this game mode will be in our world. And we want to get player zero, which since we're doing a single player game, uh, we we'll only have one index of a character. So this should return our player character. And if we take a look in the gameplay statics, this is something you can do on your own. You see it's a blueprint function library. So most of these, or if not all of these functions are more powerful and useful in blueprint, but we can use them inside of C++. It has a crap ton of functionality, bro. Uh, like anything that you can think of that has to do with gameplay is possibly already created in this library. So take a look at it. Um, definitely get get familiar with this. You see it's get global time dilation, set global time dilation so you can slow down time. It's just, there's a lot of functionality built into this engine, man, it's beautiful. So we got our reference here. Let's go ahead and check if our reference is valid because we always want to do valid checks in Unreal just to keep the game from crashing. So we want to say if player character is valid and if player characters get power level or get current power level is greater than a zero. So if our power level is greater than zero and we are a valid player character, let's go ahead and call that function that updates the power level, which is player character dot update current power level. And we want to pass in a negative value here. That negative value is going to be our negative decay amount. And I can already see that we haven't set up any defaults for our decay amount or our delay time. So let's go ahead and set up a default for that. So our delay time, let's go ahead and say we want to do this every um, two tenths of a second. So 0 0.2 F and our decay amount, the amount we want to subtract. Let's say we want to subtract 50 from the power level or like 50 units from the power level. So let's start with that and see what we got. And I think we have everything that we need here. So I'll go ahead and run the editor. See if we ran into any issues in the build here. Okay, so clean compile. Um, I'm trying to think. I always want to try to think and see if I'm going to run into any issues. But I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play here and I'm going to navigate to my character. And let's see if that power level is decreasing. Yes, that power level is decreasing at a crazy rate, <laughs> at a crazy rate. OK, OK, so now it's zero. Uh, let's go ahead and do that again. Let's uh, navigate to our character and you see our power level is decreasing by 50 units every two tenths of a second. And uh, we can go ahead and stop this. And that's why we set this as a, a blueprint. I'm going to go back to perspective. I'm going to set. Uh, that's why we set this as a blueprint uh, value so that we could go ahead and jump into our blueprint class. And I think we put it in our core in our game mode class. And now we can adjust this timer and adjust this decay amount. So I'll probably do this every half a second. And maybe make the decay amount like 35, maybe. So it's not so crazy. And let's take a look and see what that feels like. So I'm going to press play and I'm going to navigate to my character. And we're still decreasing by 50. And I think that's because we're not using our game mode as the override here. So Come into the world setting and we need to set our blueprint version of this game mode to our game mode override. So I'm going to pass in my blueprint game mode. And now we should be able to navigate to our character and see, OK, now that that makes more sense right there. We're decreasing at a very 
a solid rate there. We have time to, to change things and uh, get our power level back up. But it also does bring the challenge um, of our power level decreasing. And this way you can further uh, test and play and tweak the numbers to get the perfect timer amount and the perfect decay amount for your level or your power level. And once you find that, go ahead and join me in the next video where we get started on some graphic side of things and adding some flair to the power level. So if you're ready for that, go ahead and join me in the next video and I'll see you guys in there. Peace.